Hi there, everybody. I know this is coming out late, so I will uh, keep it short. Uh, I am going to start off just really quickly going through the same similar sort of layout, looking at a massing study. Um, but you could very easily just pull up your file from the tutorial that you did for Tuesday uh, and use that same massing study with mass floors and uh, your program schedule uh, as a good way to start. You actually don't need the program schedule, but just a good, uh, decent mass that you can investigate. So we're going to continue building off of some of that, this kind of pre-programming phase um, design. Uh, and the next key component to your tower design is going to be understanding the core and how the core of the building is actually going to affect your programming because it takes up one, a very big chunk of the program, but also um, it has an effect of the program and the core correlate to one another because the size of the stairs and the size of the elevators have a lot to do with where you place program. And we'll look more at that tomorrow when we get into the lab uh, situation. But as you're, as we start laying out the, the groundwork for that, um, we're going to basically be looking at how to model stairs and elevators today, uh, trying to sort of lay out and, and apportion a, a the, the, the floor plates uh, to approximate what you're going to need uh, for those basic elements of any given core. Uh, trust me, as you go through this semester, you're going to want to simplify, simplify, simplify when it comes to your core. So I'm just going to make a, a few extra levels here uh, using the array tool again. <clears throat> going up 14 feet. I'm going to, it's kind of important, relatively important. You may want to change your levels so that they're uh, at 14 feet floor to floor because as we're looking at stairs, some of the math won't work out if you're using something other than that. I've just got five levels here. I'm going to go to view and make myself a new 3D view. And then I'm going to go to level one and create a new mass, a new in-place mass. I'm going to try to remember to hit the control key here. Oh, I got to turn that setting on. Okay, got that going now. Uh, I'm just going to lay out for myself a, a kind of mass something a little fine. You can see how Revit will highlight when I'm parallel to another uh, line inside of the drawing. So uh, the, the line across from this one becomes highlighted once I've um, made a parallel move to the, to the other side. Um, I'm going to go into my 3D view here. Zoom out and select that boundary that I made and hit create form. This is going up to 100 feet. Uh, I really only need it to go maybe up to about 70 feet to accommodate the different levels I have. And I'm gonna hit finish mass. I'm just gonna keep this relatively simple. Um, uh, we'll explore some more complex ones later on. Uh, so I need to add in my other levels. Um, just under view uh, to create the other floor plan views for three, four, and five. I hit the plan view button uh, once those are complete. So now what I'm going to do is I want to start using the stair tool to look at how we might um, put a couple of stairs into this massing model. So the first thing I'm going to do is just come over here to the architecture and uh, architecture tab and hit the stair button. And stairs in Revit are a really powerful tool. Um, you can see here that the, the, the base definitions that go along with it basically <clears throat> allow you to associate it with uh, uh, a particular level and or offset from that level if you were to have mezzanines or something. Uh, so though, frankly, with the mezzanine, you should probably go ahead and make another level. And you can see that it actually also defines dimensions for you. Um, looking at the, the actual tread depth and the riser height, both of these driven by code. So seven inches is going to be your max riser, riser height driven, driven by um, the, the code. And you can see that it's actually already telling me I need 24 treads simply based on the fact that I'm going from level one to level two. The desired stair height then, or the floor to floor height, is 14 feet. Uh, so I'm going to need 24 treads. Uh, but if there's 24 treads in this stair and they're 11 inches long, I know that I can't go more than uh, more than 12 feet in height, 12 feet in height, without having a landing and given in my stair. 
uh, again based on some of the code and we're going to look at more of that in the lab tomorrow um, so I know I'm going to have to have some kind of a landing with any of these stairs in the corporate office tower um, but that again is also built right into Revit so you can see once I click once I'm just clicking off in the white space here to start drawing this stair um, it will tell me exactly it snaps bit actually to uh, given lengths and so what I'm looking to do here is to kind of create a parallel stair that's just going to uh, allow me to um, kind of turn back and I can get a sense of what the actual dimension of, uh, of the stair uh, might be inside of my building. Uh, so I've created, I clicked it so that it, I gave it 12 treads coming across. You can see by default it's defining the stair to be three feet wide. And I want to put a one foot gap between these, so I'm going to click it here at a four foot extension and then start continuing this, the treads back the other way and define the other 12. Um, let's do this again in the first level. So this makes a little bit more sense. So back here uh, under architecture, oh, we're already drawing our stair. Sorry. Making a run, this will make a lot more sense uh, looking at it this direction. Uh, so heading up and then four feet across in order to get a 12 inch gap between the two runs. Ah, uh, so the, the distance that I was getting there was actually uh, coming across from the center line. So here you can see I've created one uh, without a gap between them. And let's let's try doing another one here next to it that so you can see it's actually showing me already that they that they're overlapping um, and then we need to change the width. So let's do another one here. Oops. And coming up 12. Uh, and this time we'll come across to get to the center. If I've got three foot width on the stair, uh, then I need to go to, what, seven feet? No, uh, three feet plus one foot. From outside to outside should be seven feet total. Oh, uh, that's snapping to the middle now. So if that's the case, then we need three feet plus one foot plus one and a half would be five, six. There we go. Now we're getting it with our one foot gap left over. And you can see how it goes ahead and draws a landing for you, turns the corner, uh, snaps everything. It's very intuitive um, tool. If I want to change the width to say 44 inches, which is by code, uh, the width that's necessary for uh, uh, an egress stair, Oops, let's not go with 44 feet. And now we can adjust the overall width. Should be 44, should be 100 inches total. Uh, I could type in 100 inches here and I'll get my 12 inch gap. That would be 44 plus 44 is 88, plus 12 would be 100. Uh, so I'm selecting different parts of this in order to get that overall distance. So this is going to be your typical stair in an office tower. 14 foot floor to floor height means 24 treads. Um, if we look at it in 3D view here, I'm going to zoom out and see if I can find this guy. Uh, so the one thing that we're going to want to do uh, with these stairs immediately is delete these terrible railings that it gives us in Revit. Oftentimes you're going to uh, you're going to find that there are terrible things that are uh, that are given to you by default in Revit, and the stair railings are the highlight of those elements that are terrible to look at. Um, we'll deal with the railings later on again, but go ahead and delete them. And typically, you know, these stairs are going to be wrapped in a firewall, so you're only going to have a handrail coming down around the outside, and then you'll have a railing down through the middle. <coughs> so stairs are relatively straightforward. Now we do know 
um, given from that what the dimensions, the overall dimensions are. Um, although we do want to actually measure what the length is, so we know that the width is 100 inches. Um, I'm just going to go to annotate here and turn on the detail line and just to get myself a, a line that I can use to measure this distance. So there I saw it was 13 feet 3 inches. Uh, I do think I probably need to match the if I double click on this, the width of, I do. So because I started with the width at three feet, the, the landing area here is still only three feet wide. That's going to need to be 44 inches as well by code. So now we can hit the checkbox. All I did was double click there in order to get that to, to snap. Um, I can either, you know, come in here under the modify tab and use the measure tool to get an overall dimension. So I'm at 13 feet, 11 inches for that. And again, the width this direction was 100 inches or 8 feet, 8 inches. It's going to be important because that's the size of the void that we need to cut through the building to accommodate these stairs um, when we go to place them. So back in 3D here, I'll get rid of that one and then we'll come back out to the original mass here. And what I want to do is go ahead and create a new mass here in the corner um, that I'm going to use uh, again to, to cut away at this building. So an in-place mass, okay, just the way we've been doing. Um, and I'll go to level one, zoom out here, and I'm going to place this stair uh, somewhere along this side in the center here. So I'm going to... Um, come in here and use the offset tool to actually offset from uh, the original mass. So I actually need to draw along that edge first. So I'm just going to trace this guy and then trace this guy. Uh, and then I'll use the offset tool now to offset this. Oops. So we want to offset it 13, no. 8 feet 8 inches. So I'm going to offset that. And then I think what we'll do is just go ahead and draw a midway line to the perpendicular there. And now we'll do an offset of half the distance, of, half the length of the stair. So it was 13 feet 11 inches. Um, that's going to be 6 feet 11 and a half inches in each direction. And now we can do some trimming and extending to clean this up. And I can delete some of these all of their lines. And then hit finish mass. Oops, not finish. Come back into 3D and select this and hit edit. Okay, select this guy, hit create form, and pull it all the way up to the height of the tower, to the height of my building. There we go, get it snapped. Now I finish mass. Now I can go and use the cut tool to cut that other geometry away from the original one. Uh, makes it a little easier to see if you turn on the shaded view here. Um, that what I've done is is cut this mass away um, from the original. There we go. So it's a void now up through the building. Uh, <clears throat> so now I've got my my shaft here ready to actually place my stair up through there. Uh, maybe this would be a lot easier if I go ahead and turn on my mass floors for this original object. So there you can see how the mass floors have been cut away by the, the other object. So now let's go ahead and place that stair again. Um, uh, again, I'll come here to level one. Zoom in, architecture, stair. And our settings are all basically the same uh, as we go and start start drawing this guy. I want to put 12 
risers in that direction and again uh, we'll have to adjust these once we get get it going get it laid out there and then we'll come back change the width 44 inches 44 inches And there's that warning about the landing uh, depth that I should have paid attention to last time. I'm not matching up with the code. So what I want to do is use the align command to get this stair aligned up with that edge of the, the building there. Let's see what's going on. Still three foot eight, three foot eight. Looks like we're good. And hit the checkbox, and there the now the stair is uh, moving up from floor one to floor two. And again, I can come in here and delete these railings. I'm just selecting them and deleting them. Uh, if I double click on it now, I can come back in here, and you can see there's actually an option here under the definitions where you can say multi story top. And here I can actually choose to have the stair go up to level five. Hit the checkbox and it takes the stair all the way up to the top level of my building. Uh, just like that. Uh, okay, so let's do one more of those. Let's do another one over here on the other side just to reinforce some of that. So level one, go back to level one. And this time I'm going to uh, select this mass that I've got that I cut. Maybe it'd be easier to do in 3D that I used to cut. So I'm coming over here and I'm going to tab until it lets me select that mass and I'll hit edit mass in place and come into level one and I'm going to draw another 13 foot 11 offset. Uh, again I'll go to the modify tab to get the offset tools to come up and I'm going to do 13 feet 11 inches. Oh no, i do 100 inches. Oh, sorry, doing the same thing. All right, draw this edge first. Now I'll do the offset. This direction. Draw a midline. And do another offset. Six feet, 11 and a half inches. In each direction. And we'll do trim extend to clean it up. Now, when I go to actually uh, select this and make a, a form, come back into 3D, because I made it as part of that other geometry that was cut, it's automatically going to start cutting this uh, mass away from the other piece. So I'll snap it up to the top here again. Get something to snap to. There we go. The finished mass, and you can see by default it went ahead and cut that away uh, from the other mass. So back in here, um, this time what I'll do is in level one, I can select the other stair and I will copy it. <coughs> and paste it. I'm going to copy it, select corner there, and paste it over here. And again, I'll use the align tool to align that edge and that edge. And I'll use the outside to align it in. And let's take a look at that in 3D. They look pretty good. Got the stair moving up through the through the building uh, up to the fifth floor again. Okay, so the other thing that I wanted to to discuss is elevators. So elevators aren't quite as built in to Revit um, as the stair function is. So in this case, what you're going to need to do is use um, is use a manufacturer's website. I know I've talked about this a little bit in class, uh, but in essence, many of the manufacturers um, provide Revit 
interactive Revit models for you to use to actually construct your models. This applies to lots of different objects, but escalators in particular. Um, today we're going to use the Tyson Krupp uh, elevator tool. The Tyson Krupp elevator.com slash tools is where you get to this. Uh, I'll post the link on Moodle people so you don't have to type it all in. Um, so what you're going to want to do is come in here to the elevator finder. You know, obviously a lot of elevator manufacturers or, you know, especially heavy equipment building manufacturers are going to provide these sorts of models for you. Um, the Tyson Grupp one tends to be the best, but Otis, some of the other companies also provide them. So under the elevator finder here, it takes you through and asks you some of the options um, for the elevator that you're sizing out. And you can, you can um, dive into this website a little bit further and find quite a bit more information about um, the size of the elevator that you want for the needs that you have. Um, I won't go into all that today. Uh, so, so basically you go in, it doesn't seem to be working, so I'm not going to delay it too long. Oh, there we go. So the net travel here first is the first thing that we wanted to find. And so I'm going to pop back out here. Uh, if I'm trying to get it to go up to level five here, my level five, and my elevation is at 56 feet. Uh, so I can put that into the tool here. 56 feet, zero inches. Uh, the speed, let's make it pretty fast, say 450. <coughs> Doesn't seem to want to change to that. Uh, and the capacity, let's go with 5,000 pounds. So you can hit find, it's going to bring up uh, uh, an elevator for you, an elevator definition. You can see you can collect data on it, you can get drawings for it, you can get specs on it, and all those things could be used to help frame uh, whether this is the appropriate elevator. And you can also get a BIM model. Uh, so here you get the uh, zip file that you can download from their website when you hit the BIM model. Uh, it's going to bring it up. Uh, it's a zip file, so you need to extract it. I'm going to do that quick. And now back in Revit, uh, you're going to come to insert and load the family. We're going to load this family in. Um, mine is in the downloads folder and here's the folder that it came in. You can see it gives you an entrance, which is basically the door that you're going to need to place as well as the elevator, uh, an elevator shaft or the elevator uh, car. Um, and I'm going to hit open. These things need to be imported in. See, this one goes all the way back to 2010. So once it comes in, it's not actually here right away uh, for a particular reason. It's, it's driven by walls, and we don't have any walls in the model yet. Um, but where you can find it is under Families and under Specialty Equipment. So here under Families and Specialty Equipment, you can see you can find the CONV 5000 elevator that we've spec'd. Um, and what it's going to give you are options for whether or not you want the counterweight uh, and the door to open left and right. Uh, so I'm just going to bring one of these in. You can see it thinks about it a little bit. Um, oh, I still need a wall in order to place this. So I'm just going to quickly kind of build a little elevator lobby here. just to use to snap the elevator to. So back down here, drag it in. And you can see by default, it's snapping to these walls. Um, this equipment that's at the, um, to the bottom right of the elevator, you can see how it's cutting the wall. Uh, and the stuff, I'll go ahead and place this one. This stuff that's here on the side is actually <coughs> the equipment that's either above or below. So um, you could consider that to be above another elevator. Say if you were you were typically going to arrange an elevator lobby here, you might arrange, say, three elevators along this side. Get it here. Um, and I might go back and adjust the spacing to get those correct. So you can see it comes with its own parameters. Um, and Per usual, the the you know the levels that it's associated with are important. So I'm going to come in and hit 
14 feet for each of these level to level changes up to level five and now if I come back into my 3D view here we can take a look at what this looks like so it looks like it actually placed the elevator for some reason it's um, located at minus 34 feet this one seems to be funny because it's hydraulic let's try another one here I'm gonna bring in another one that I downloaded and I'll put one on the website just so you've got access to one their, their website isn't perfect but um, so I'm gonna go back to my downloads folder and bring in this 4500 350 so it's 350 speed 4500 pounds it's gonna import that one again again I'll put that on the Moodle page in case you don't want it but you, you still should go visit the Tyson Krupp tool uh, just to learn more about how it works <coughs> So here's our new SIN one. We'll bring that in. It's more not a uh, it's a conventional counterweight elevator, so it's not uh, associated with uh, a series of uh, hydraulic components that would go below grade. Uh, so I'll go ahead and insert one of those here onto these walls. Okay, uh, now you can see the, the when I downloaded this, I told it that I had a much taller building. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, but if I hit 14 feet for these guys, hit apply. And now we can go into the 3D view here and take a look at it. And you can see that it's um, now associated I think the elevator car is kind of in between, but it's associated with each of the levels. Um, my, the walls that I built here, you can see, need to go, need to be adjusted so that they're going up to level two. And if I want them to be on the other floors, I can go ahead and select all those. And I can do a copy and then go to level two and go to modify. Oh, I missed them somehow. Let's select them here in level one, holding the control key to select the four walls and hitting copy. Then go to level two and paste a line to selected levels. One, two, three, five, and that'll give me those walls going all the way up. I still need to cut the shaft for this uh, elevator as it goes up, and you can see, I actually don't think I got it associated with, uh, I didn't get the height correct here. Stick. That's not me, that's my dog, I promise. <laughs> okay, I'll hit apply. This is close enough. Um, so you can see the brackets are actually hitting where they should be. But we haven't cut through the floor plate uh, in the same way uh, to, uh, to afford the, the gap for the elevator going up through. So what we want to do is come back to level one here. And I'm just going to put a measurement on this guy and figure out that it's 8 foot 2. And I'm going to tab to get to the wall and to the outside. It's 9 foot 8 by 8 foot 2 are the dimensions. Uh, so again, what I can do is come in, tab through to try to get this mass. Probably going to be easier to do in 3D. So I want to get a hold of that mass that I used to cut those guys and hit edit in place and then back in level one I can come in here 
and I'm going to draw a square profile around this guy. And hit create form, back in 3D. Got to turn this back to wireframe. Looks like my geometry is a little bit screwy here. Something snapped to the wrong edge. Now I've got the entire perimeter and I can hit create form and we'll make that extrusion and I'll pull it up to snap it to the top of the building, mass. And in this case I would actually theoretically want to also bring it down uh, below grade to accommodate for the equipment that's below. We can hit finish mass and again uh, it's going to go ahead and crop that geometry out for the elevator shaft uh, down to the building. So I can see both that mass and the other, uh, and the hole that it's, that it's cutting down through the building. Okay, that's all I want to do today, just to get you a rough orientation. Um, we're going to do more of this in the lab, uh, and talk more specifically about some of the code restrictions that go with uh, these stairs and how we might actually use the schedule that you made. Um, so you're going to want to make sure and bring your uh, the model that you did of your studio project to lab. We're going to keep working on that one uh, again uh, tomorrow. All right, thanks. Bye-bye.